Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. We've made it week seven, guys. We've made it seven weeks, which means we are one episode away from our from our two-month anniversary, which is really awesome. Um, I'm sorry again. I really hope uh, the last episode did well, and I'm assuming our podcast numbers are insane. <laughs> I'm saying that right now because we're recording this ahead of time. September is a crazy month for us. Uh, we got a lot going on in September our personal lives. September and October is a we crazy have month for us three weddings in september my brother a friend and my own wedding or our our own wedding oh yeah we're getting married by the way by the way um the last the first day of october if it's not right carly october I should first be there. so yeah. we're 10, recording one twenty one we're recording these episodes ahead of time that way we can really do as much work as possible for october and really get ready for that so um as I speak right now, it is August 28th, I think, when we're doing this, but this episode will release probably September 9th, so when this comes out, it'll only be 52 days until Halloween. Ooh. Um, we are definitely on, for the Halloween, we're doing a special episode. We're going to be in costume, and we're also going to talk about, it's going to be a little bit longer episode, we're going to review a movie together. And talk about a movie. Oh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, Any idea of what movie we're watching? I have a thought about that. Um, that's going to be reviewed. That will come out on the first October episode, the movie that we're going to review. But we are okay. going to do a movie review, and we're going to do it, you know, in costume. So for our YouTube videos out there, there are YouTube viewers out there, you're going to love that. Um, for the people that listen to this at home on a podcast, we are going to do some kind of drinking game. That will be involved as well. Either we're going to do it, or you guys can follow along. That's happening. I think it's going to be a lot of fun just to kind of like for the three people that actually care about Like us. if somebody dies, you take a shot or something. Yeah, depending exactly. Depending on what kind of movie yeah, it depending is. Depending on what they say. They say something stupid, like take a if shot. It, if it says Halloween, then you take a shot every yep. time they say Halloween. Okay. Exactly. That so fun. Yeah, so we'll do Hocus Pocus where they say Happy Halloween like every other oh, thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that's just to kind of give you an idea of like, why do they look the same? They're dressed the same and like. You know, like, I don't know, like one of them died, but they seem very cheerful now because both of them there is like, it's because we pre-recorded. That's why. <laughs> so because we probably, I'm assuming we already hit like 6 billion like downloads. Thank you in advance. Oh, do you? I, I, yeah, I'm joking. Suspect that. I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Come on. Let me have this fun. Um, anyway, just to get into it here, let's talk about the drink that we're drinking tonight. What what beverage, what elixir are we drinking tonight for the spirits version of Ghost Stories? What do we got? Um, we're going with my go-to drink, which is the 14 Hands Wine. Mm. Um, this one specifically is the Merlot, and it is a dry red wine with a sweet aftertaste. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, it's got a horse on the front. There are a lot of different kinds of 14 Hand Wines, uh, a so large can I pause variety. Real quick, but... um, just for our viewers, because I basically you're like the family I never had at this point. Carly is really big into ponies. Uh, she actually does equine. She owns her own horse. I do equine. You do equine. She owns her own horse, and she competes in horses. Um, she does this thing called mounted gaming, and she also does dressage, which is a form of horse dancing. A lot of people know what dressage um, is. I'm making sure you don't know where viewers are coming from. They might not have ever seen a horse. We got we got people listening to this thing in like Dubai and Germany. Uh, Germans, I think, know about horses. Hopefully but we know. have some Great Britain Wisconsin, viewers. Wisconsin. Calif Californians don't own horses, do um, they? Yes, they have their own mounted games. Really? Yeah, over there. Dang, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, they just made like Facebook and apps and stuff and we're homeless. And we're like movie actors yeah, in California. Yeah, Exactly. Right. Anyway, she's into ponies. So it's a very important thing that 14 Hands did a fantastic job advertising. Using to horses the to the equestrian world. Yes, to the equestrian world. As I bring that up to the camera. All right. So, Moving on. Very, very, very good. Very good shit there. Right there. Perfect. So. What are we going to read today? For tonight's tale, I shall be reading it. Um, what do you guys know, and Carly, you are everybody, about hellhounds? Hellhounds? Mm-hmm. I know on Supernatural that Crowley, the top demon, owns hellhounds, and he will basically sick them on people to kill them. So hellhounds have a great mythos um, in many cultures about these things that are of the devil to help retrieve the souls of those that are damned. Okay. And in today's tale, we'll be uh, highlighting one of these 
incidents that happened. So brace yourself for the tale of hellhounds on my trail. Not too far from where I live, there's an old stone bridge that overlooks a lake. I've been past enough to know that it would make a great picture, so one day I decided to head out and take a few. It was sunny and clear out when I left home, and the rest of the day was supposed to be just as good. But when I got to the bridge, it was pretty cloudy, and there was so much mist over the lake that you could barely see anything. Now that I think about it, I don't really remember it getting overcast or foggy. It just kind of happened. But it was already there, so I got my camera out and took a few photos. They were all, you know, basically shit. I couldn't see anything in the the viewfinder. There's this little island in the lake right in the middle. And I thought that might that that might come out well. Good fucking god. I thought that the images might come out well. I can read by the way, guys. But it was a little too foggy though, so I gave up. I was about to head to my car when I smelled something. Something something was off. It was really acidic, like something burning. But it was so faint that I could re- I couldn't really tell what it was. Sulfur. I don't know. Maybe. Ooh, sulfur? What could it be? I looked back to, at the island. There was nothing there. So I got in my car and I headed home. I figured I I could go over the photos on my computer before I deleted them. First, sorry, I can't speak, guys. Might be a little tipsy. (laughs) Wine is really good. Plus the tequila I just shot. First one was really shitty. Second one was shit. So were the third, fourth, fifth. Okay, all of his pictures are shit, by the way. I didn't realize, I didn't see it when I took the photo, but there was something on the island. I zoomed in all the way, and the pixelization was god-awful. But I could almost see something, like a deer, maybe a moose, or even a big dog, standing on the island. I wouldn't have seen the damn thing at all, though, with the fog. It, it, I, couldn't, I couldn't really see it at all if it hadn't been for those eyes. It had bright red eyes that distorted the pixels around it. Ooh, glowing eyes. Never a good sign. Must have been due to the mist or something, I thought. I went to the next photo, but that one was corrupted as well. So I went back, but the photo, that one was shit as well. I tried to recover the file a couple of times. It didn't work. So I went to sleep and thought, nah, you know, it is what it is. I work in town. It's not a big town. Just one of those places with a Walmart and McDonald's, a couple of mom and pop shops. Sounds like West Virginia. (laughs) We had pretty windy weather that week, so I, so when I, God fucking damn it, I am way too tipsy for this shit. Pretty windy weather that week, so when I headed out to my car, no one was talking or anything. What the fuck do you mean? Like, how fucking windy is it that you can't fucking talk to people? Why would you talk to people? I'm sorry. This is the hermit coming out of me. Why? <laughs> Why are you talking to people in the first place? If you're just going wow, out to your car from somewhere. Wow, that is a homeschooler mentality there. Okay, folks. Listen, but if listen. you're going people out to your exist, car from why the, are you talking to them? From the grocery store, or if you're like leaving uh-huh. your house for something, and you're going out <laughs> to your car, like sure, like hi, like quick wave, but it's not like, hey Bob, how's your week been going? Like you've got places to go. I'm sorry, Re- just keep going. I'm just saying, like. We're going to talk about this in therapy. Uh, I have I have to park a couple blocks away from work because of parking regulations and stuff. There's really a huge tree that grows. There's this really huge tree that grows. Do not drink tequila and wine before you read because the words look weird. Probably shouldn't mix. There's this really huge tree that grows into the sidewalk of the where there. Huh? Fucking Christ. Hold on. More alcohol will help. Can you just restart that whole phrase? No, because it says on the where... Oh, no, that's wrong. Yep, sorry. Yeah, that makes more sense now. The sidewalk on the way there, <laughs> it makes the path... <laughs> on the where there. On the where... Listen, listen. The tequila told me it was on the where there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you just start over a little bit? <laughs> it makes... I got this. I got this, coach. Let me stay in. It makes the path all uneven. And when I got there, I smelled something. 
It was that same burning smell, except this time it was stronger. It was like burning hair, I realized. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, and no one else was around like me, so I don't think anyone else smelled it. What does it mean, like you? What? No one else is around like me? It literally, no one else was was around, so I don't know if anyone else smelled it. So I guess where he lives, there's not a lot of people that have a nose. Hmm. But then I saw something down the sidewalk. It was n- near this old house that's been vacated for years, right in the front yard. It was a dog, I think. But it was a lot, it was a lot larger than any dog I've ever seen before. Its shoulders was probably three or four feet off the ground, <clears throat> and it had pitch black fur. But that's not why I saw it. <laughs> you wouldn't see it because it was ginormous. The size of a freaking horse? I saw it because of its eyes. It had red glowing eyes. So I think what he meant, like, that fucker was... It's not just because it was a big-ass black bear in the front yard. It's because it had these glowing eyes that were looking into my soul. But also the fact that its shoulders were four feet off the ground? That's a fucking, like, a... That's a horse. That thing... uh, It's a Shetland pony, definitely. You could probably vault that thing. Vaulting means you jump on it from the ground, by the way, for people that don't know what a horse is or equine sports keep going the wind was really strong that day again with this wind i think he's a weatherman really strong a couple of power lines were down already jesus christ this is a tornado why the fuck are you outside i know get in a basement or a tub and a couple of okay (laughs) uh, hold on i need another shot of this this wine (laughs) let's listen to this fucking line this guy says a couple a couple of power lines were down because of the wind. And a couple of trees, too. Why the fuck are you walking outside Get if literally... indoors. If literally the wind is blowing so hard, power lines and trees are growing Protect down. Protect yourself. Yeah. This is why... The, this is why people aren't chilling outside yeah. having a conversation. So, uh, where the fuck was I? Okay. A couple of power lines were down already. And a couple of trees, too. Especially the older ones. Like... The one I was standing next to. What the f- You were retarded. Ah, run, brother! The branch that fell from it missed me by a foot. It smashed the roof of the car. It had shattered the windshield and everything. If I had hit- If it had hit me- This is really hard when you're, when you're tipsy. If it had hit me, I'd be dead. No doubt about it. I fell down, so I must have jumped away or something. A couple of people came to help- help me up and i asked them if they if they saw the dog but when i tried to point it out to them it was gone just completely it was vanished because it's a hellhound and it was weird that just completely just totally vanished but what was strange the smell the smell still lingered in the air and for some reason nobody could smell it but me I got... Oh, because you are next, boy. You think that's what it is? Oh, yeah. I don't know what Crowley's coming for him. Cra- he must have made a Crowley, deal with the devil. Crowley is also the demon god devil thing in um, Supernatural. No, he's the, basically the top demon mm-hmm. in hell that basically organized everything in, in the Supernatural, in the movie Supernatural. In the, the movie, show. even the TV show. I don't think Dean was in a movie yet. Um, I got in my car, but I, but I couldn't, I could still smell burning hair. So I emptied a can of air freshener and drove the hell home. I had a tough time getting to sleep that night. I tried to cook dinner, but I burnt everything. Ha! Huh, that's funny. And I live a long way from town, so I couldn't order anything. Okay, so you're basically living alone in the middle of nowhere. I ended up eating soup out of a can but it didn't taste right, so I threw it away. Something He's got the coronas. Was, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got the corona. <laughs> he can't taste anymore. That's why the dog's chasing him. He's like, you're sick. a dead man. He's sick. Uh, you see, it's not a Crowley's dog. It's a corona's it's dog. A corona <laughs> dog. Something was up with my house that night. It, it was built in the 20s or, or something like that. My grandfather gave it to me when he died. He said that his father built it but couldn't stand living in it because... Even though he built it really secure, 
um, it had its issues. I guess I've gotten used to it for the most part, but there were a lot of creaks that night. Sometimes there were patterns to them, almost like footsteps. And that's not all. A couple of times when I looked out the window, I saw weird shadows, like someone or something was walking out there. Eventually I fell asleep. I didn't have any dreams, at least none that I can, you know, remember. Okay, this boy definitely made a deal with the devil at some point in his life, and the hellhounds are coming for him. I'm thinking so. My alarm clock had been going off for a half hour when I finally got up. I woke up on the couch, even though I remembered sleeping in bed. <laughs> Maybe I slept walked, even though I never had before. I felt like shit. I was groggy and something smelled so bad that it almost made me gag. I'm not a morning person, but that morning was a lot worse. Maybe a shave would make me feel better. I, I don't know. I'll try anything at this point. A hot shower and a shave maybe would do me good. My bathroom still like it, it was something was off. My bathroom's pretty small and I could still even after cleaning the whole house and the bathroom I still had that weird smell there's a toilet next to the sink and behind them is the bathtub the electronics are are always on the fritz it has been for as long as I can remember so the light goes off for a split second now and then sometimes the current surges and blows out a bulb too and before that happens you can always smell it burning and that's what happened that morning I smelled something burning just as I was talking, was, was starting to shave. Well, tequila and reading is not good. I hurried up because I didn't want to be stuck in the dark with a straight razor at my throat. But then I realized that it wasn't the usual burning smell. It smelled like burning hair. It smells like a dead dog. It was the same smell in my nostrils since I got up and I didn't recognize it until then because it was really strong like really strong. I looked at myself in the mirror and it looked like a mess and my hands were shaking, but there was something dark on the shower curtain behind me. It wasn't my shadow though. My eyes were bloodshot, but its eyes were even redder. <laughs> I didn't know what happened next. I must have fallen back and hit my head against the tub because I saw stars when I tried to stand. That wasn't the... The worst of it, though, when I fell, I had nicked myself with my straight razor. Uh-oh. And I was losing a lot of blood. Where did he nick himself? On his throat? Why are you showering with a straight razor? Yeah, It's not 2021. Good. And this is where you need to. Our new sponsor <laughs> is Why? Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> the Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> that would be a great hey plug right there. <laughs> Are you being chased by demonic animals and you're still using a switchblade to cut yourself with? Switch over to Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> Save yourself huh. so much money every month. And your life. It's only $9.99 a month and you get three to four new. $9.99? $99? God damn. $9.99. Oh, sorry. $9.99. That makes sense. That makes more sense. Good grief. Yeah. I would know. I buy it. There was some badges. Yeah, she wears the badges. She wears the pants. Badges pants? I'm trying, okay? Just stop talking and start reading. I'm trying to do both. There was some, there was some bandages of gauze and that she's marrying me. There was some bandages of gauze in the medicine cabinet behind the mirror. I am not reading this trunk ever again. <laughs> you read it twice and it literally sounded worse the second time. I thought I put more effort into it the second time. I tried so hard. <laughs> This was brought to you by 14 hands. 14 hands and tequila. But 14 hands mostly. <laughs> I grabbed them and patched myself up, but it wasn't going to last. I could, I could, I could tell. I ran out of the bathroom to call 911, but I couldn't get through. I dialed it carefully a few times, but I just couldn't get through. I got in my car, didn't waste time taking a coat, even though it was pretty cold and windy. I did bring a survival kit, though, and my grandfather's shotgun. Why the <laughs> Fuck, are you bringing a sh- <laughs> grab a coat, but you did think to bring a, a survival- Listen. A survival listen, listen, listen. and my grandfather's shotgun. I'm going to bring the necessities. What kind of story? Is, is his name Derek? No, I, it might be Derek, but I think this is also, he lives in West Virginia. 
He's like, listen, I ain't going to bring a coat, but it's my God-given right as an American to bring a gun and a survival Ain't no need to be warm. But no, I, no, we have a survival kit. too, and I'm going to grab do me you, some gauze. Do you know what's in the survival kit? Could be a coat. Huh. Doubt I wouldn't. Checkmate. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the story. The wind was really bad that day. Everything I saw was just gray, bleak, like all the color was gone from the world. The road signs are usually bright and green, but even though they look kind of dull, it's because you're fucking bleeding out, dude. I tried to keep track of the mile markers. That's how I know when I'm getting close to town, but I couldn't focus on them for some reason because you're, you're bleeding to death. And even though I drove for a long, long time, I never got to town. At some point, I smelled burning hair again. I tried oh to ignore gosh. it, but it got strong, really strong. And I had to pull over to throw to throw up out of the window. In fact, I pulled over at the bridge, the same bridge that I took the photo at, and I threw up into the water, but the smell was still there, stronger than ever. I had to drive, though. My gauze wasn't holding, and I was starting to feel faint. So I took the car out of park and I was about to start driving when I thought I saw something in the rear view mirror. Like a brake light or something, but it but it was eyes. It's that four foot tall dog coming at you, boy. Bright red glowing eyes. Here he comes. I stomped on the gas and drove the car. Oh boy. Oh no, what'd he do? What'd he do? I stomped on the gas and drove the car off the bridge. I remember hitting the water. What? And then passing out. How insane is this guy? Why did he drive off the bridge? There was no reason to drive off the bridge. Did I miss something? Somehow I survived the impact. I even got out of the car, and since my shotgun and survival kit were over my lap when I was driving, oh my God. I grabbed them too. <laughs> I had to swim to shore, and maybe it. And. and <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like the idea. I cannot. You just like you just lay a shotgun. He just lays it right across his lap. A shotgun and survival kit. So you're gonna go into the hospital with your shotgun and survival kit. Oh my gosh. So I got those necessities out of the fucking car. I I grabbed them too. I had to swim to shore and I made it. Soaked, freezing cold, but alive. My car was gone. No shit. There was no way to get get it out of the water and i knew that there wasn't much traffic on the bridge i'd die before someone came by if if i tried to hitchhike great but guess what i have the survival kit i used my survival kit to to redo the dressing on my neck then i grabbed a few of the dry branches the wind had knocked down and i made a fire that warmed me up a little bit i started to hear stuff i started to hear stuff again branches snapping things moving stuff like that some sometime there would be a flicker of motion in the corner of my eye, but whenever I looked, I didn't see anything. I heard panting, hard panting, too, like no. But then I heard it again. No, it was definitely panting, like a hungry dog. And that was when I sat with my back to the fire, not wanting to ever have my back turned to whatever might be hungry out there in the dark. I didn't think to bring any extra shells. I had two. Okay, that's why two. Anyway, I had two sh I had two shells and that was it. I didn't even know if the shotgun worked. Then why did you Why did you bring it, brother? It hadn't been fired in so long, so you randomly are not a gun expert. Oh so this goodness. is not like that that takes away from the story Brought too. My grandfather's shotgun that hasn't been shot since 1942. So hear me out. So like your brother shoot guns. But let's say you're somebody that carries all the time. Let's say you carry all the time. Okay. Makes sense. You okay. have a gun with you. Let's yeah. say you always have a little sidearm on you. Cool. Makes sense. Like, yeah. You grab that before you walk out the you're door. You're a cop or somebody that always has a gun. Great. Or you, you are a gun avatar and you like you shoot a lot. Cool. But the fact is you never shoot. And you're like what do I need to bring? The random historic like heirloom from the fireplace. I'm just going to take that randomly. That makes no I'm sense. I'm still not catching the vibe that he finds the fact that this dog type creature is after him or even dangerous. Yet he said he grabbed a shotgun instead of a coat. So clearly he thinks it's dangerous. Yeah, but nothing in the story 
hinted at the fact that he did think it was dangerous. I, I, I don't anyway, disagree with you. Keep going. Just read. I didn't think to bring any extra shells. I had only two, and that was it. I didn't even know if the shotgun worked. I hadn't been... I haven't fired it in so long, and I'd, I'd never even shot a gun before. Of course you didn't. Then why'd you bring it? Oh, my gosh. It was really misty over the lake, so I couldn't see far that way. I couldn't see far into the forest either. But at some point, I saw something, and I had definitely saw something coming at me from the lake. <clears throat> it was a big black dog with shaggy fur that smelled like burning hair. He was walking on water. And coming right at me. The heck? I aim for the red eyes. It Boom. I missed the first shot. But I hit it with the second one. At least I think I did. I didn't see it go down. I didn't hear anything except for the, sh the gunshot. But it was gone. I moved away from the fire just a, just a little bit for a better look. But the smell was still there. In fact, it was strong. So strong that my eyes teared up and that I could hear something behind me, something panting, something growling, and it started to move forward. I turned as quick as I could and it wasn't quick enough. The next morning, the local police showed up at the bridge to see the, the gaping hole in the side rail. And when they went down to the water to investigate, what they found was a shotgun and some bloody gauze and some bird branches. The most striking thing though was that all the cops said there was a weird smell and paw prints leading into the lake. This was the tale of the devil dog. First of all, <laughs> silver bullets, boy. Salt. Salt. Depends on what 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 your thought on um you know the supernatural stuff to be. I mean, uh, so I think it's this guy's fucking retarded. He's definitely a Derek. Um, How the hell did you drive your car off the bridge? You looked in your rearview mirror, going straight. No, 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 no. All right, look in the rearview mirror. Oh, just going to drive off the bridge real quick. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. I couldn't get on board at that point. But the thing that was interesting to me, not of this Derek, basically, but was the fact that, like, dealing with the devil dog and, like, the idea, like, this thing is a harbinger that reaps your soul. And, like, I like the fact that, like, it starts far away. And as the story progresses, it gets closer. Closer and closer and closer. And so it's, like... First off, it's unsettling, but it's like, well, how do you beat something like that? Because clearly it's after your soul. Oh, yeah. And so that's what I like about it, too. It's also, I think it's a representation of the Reaper. The idea of this thing that's coming to reap your soul, it just, it comes at you slowly. It's not immediate. It just, it's not aggressive to an extent. It's just, it's coming towards you because mm -hmm. it is a harbinger of your soul. And so we've been using, for the most part, um, Supernatural. And that that is very in line with how they worked in the show. Mm-hmm. They weren't evil, malicious, or whatever. They were a task to, to, to take a soul to hell. And they're taking this guy. Right, and they kill you in the process. But but that's how they take your soul. That's why they used him to kill Dean. Spoilers for anyone that likes Supernatural. Shh, stop it. Season one through five is fantastic. Everything else is mm, not as good. Um, anyway, um, not the best story structurally that we found, but... I like the demon dogs. I really did. I think we need to find more stories related to hellhounds because I really mm. do like the whole concept of hellhounds and basically why you're being hunted down by a hellhound. I would like to know the more backstory of that because yeah. he had to have made a deal with the devil at some point in his life. Or he's a bad dude. To be, yeah. Or he's a really, really bad dude mm -hmm. to be hunted down by the hellhounds. So yeah, makes you, honestly, like, just makes me more curious on why the hellhounds what were after him. Do? What did he do? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because the idea that he brought a shotgun, he knew something. He was knew up. something. He did something wrong. 
Mm-hmm. And he knew at the end of the day, he'd be safer with a gun. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He'd be safer with a gun. That I can't say better than that. Um, yeah, that was that was a good story to kind of get us amped because we're getting closer and closer to Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so announcements, Carly. Any more announcements? Um, give us a message on Instagram. I'd really appreciate some feedback on these shows, episodes, and or some great crafting ideas for Tom and I to um, take a take a crack at. And I really hope, um, you know, we busted through 100 downloads, which is amazing. And the time that we record this video, I'm going to assume that you guys not only liked our excuse me our um bent woman is that correct carly um no that's not right what's I'm the name i'm trying of it? to remember the name of it the um oh crooked lady do you guys want us to go off of the cryptid ghost stories and more into like things that are real um if you don't we don't have to it really is i want you guys to tell us what you want us to research and we'll start doing that yeah personally that story creeped me out because it ha- partially some of this has happened that's scary too yeah not just what you can see because there are stories that we've read here that really gave me goosebumps and there's a part of you that's like it didn't happen the bonus episode i'm not going to spoil it it happened for the most part um and that's scary that there are out there real monsters you know they don't always have fangs and they don't always come out of a coffin but there are in the lurks of this of this world, whether it's in the forests, in our neighborhood, or in the water, there are real monsters out there. They just don't look the way they appear, but they all thirst for blood. And that story scared me, for better or worse, because it's like that could happen. So I hope you guys liked it. I know it was a little bit shorter, but thank you guys so much for at least giving us 100 downloads. I didn't think we'd get that far. I didn't think we'd get to seven weeks. This has been so much fun to do this with my lovely, beautiful, sexy fiance. Whoa, um, calm down. Calm down. They'll, they'll learn this eventually because we're probably doing this to 100 years old. So with our one subscriber, hopefully hopefully, if we do this to 100 years old, we get one person Woo! to email in to at least. I am so desperate for an email that literally if you I just know. belittled me, I'd be like, this is so beautiful. I just share it somebody Tommy cares would about literally me. print it out and frame it. And I would, I would. Wall. And you guys would just be like, fuck you, you piece of shit. It's, like, it's just they care. And you can hear it. <laughs> yep. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, this has been week seven. Um, again, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. What's our Instagram handle, Carly? Spirits and Ghost Stories. That's amazing. And our email is spirits and ghost stories at gmail.com. If you like us, if you hate us, I don't care. Just literally email us to curse us i'll give you a thumbs up just for at least having that prowess we'll respond for sure we'll respond and with that said we'll see you next week on spirits and ghost stories later guys bye